everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Halo Combat Evolved. Um, where last we left off, we were in this exact place, as you may have noticed. Stop, please, he's already dead. Uh, some bullshit happened last time, so I, uh, I just died. Like, I just fell the fuck over. I don't know what happened. And I'm going to need to swap out this uh, snipper rifle because I'm kind of losing my interest in it. Um, what was your point? What, what what was the point of that guy? Did you need to do a fucking combat roll there? That was the most unnecessary combat roll I've ever seen. So back in the day, plasma pistol was actually the best. Because it was very boring, but it was also very practical. Um, because you can shoot it about as fast as you can shoot, as you can click the mouse. Um, which is extremely dangerous. Shit. F is flashlight and half-life, and that's what, you know, this reminds me of, because look at it. So I keep wanting to hit F to turn on the flashlight. But it's four. It's not F. Gotta remember. F is grenade. And another thing, um, oh yeah, hold on, let me finish talking about the fucking plasma pistol. So the plasma pistol was good at stripping shields, but because of the weird balance in this game, um, because I talked about how, uh, you know, bullets, besides the assault rifle, bullets are a, uh, pretty decent way to strip shields off of things, and to kill normal guys. Um, but plasma pistols will also rip through grunts pretty well, because you can see that those are the upgraded grunt shit. That was dumb. Should have waited a little longer. Uh, those are the upgraded grunts, but I still cut through them pretty quick with a plasma pistol. I don't want to swap for that. And yeah, you can shoot it as fast as you can click. So it's just the best weapon in the game, I think. Um, it can't get headshots, I think. Um, I don't know if any plasma weapons can get headshots. I think it might just be bullet-based weapons. Aha, sucker. <laughs> yep. This is Halo with a famine skull on. Picked up an assault rifle. Haven't had an assault rifle in... <laughs> minutes. Turn it on. Just... And I'm full. I've got 600 rounds. So yeah, with um, with multiple elites, you really gotta be careful around them because they're gonna eat your ass if you're not careful. Oh yeah, it's almost ass eating season, everyone. Which is to say, it's winter. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that there. No, I'll explain it. Um, this is either something my friend told me about or something that my friend's mom did. But they showed me this fucking text message, this this screenshot of a, of a text conversation where someone's mom is like, uh, hey, be careful, it's ass hating season. What? Yeah, you might slip on the ice and eat ass. You know, they mean to say ass busting, you know? You're going to slip on the ice and you're going to bust your ass. But, uh, no, that ain't what they said. Dude, the way that that elite died was actually really a metal. Because he was still standing up for a second. Like, he was just suspended by bullets. Because he tried to fall forward, and the hail of bullets from this lead tornado just held him up. <laughs> God. I will say, sometimes, like, looking at the, the Warthog with this, that will hurt me. Shit, man. Looking at the Warthog from so far away with uh, old crappy mode on, it's uh, it stands out a little more. It's kind of interesting. Also, in this, I can't tell if those are supposed to be clouds or mountains. And they're supposed to be both. There are clouds and mountains over there. 
Yeah, from here you can only see the clouds. Weird. It's like my brother-in-law just got up. I can hear him spinning his pocket knife around. He <laughs> heard him shout, really? wonder if he's listening in. I, uh, back when I worked at a grocery store, I, uh, picked up a fidget toy, but it was a, uh, it was a butterfly knife. Uh, it was one with a, it was one without a sharp blade, you know, a practice knife. Uh, but people would like suburban moms and uh, teenagers from the local college would come up to me, you know, seeing me standing there working a job, working a shift in my uniform, but I'm spinning a butterfly knife back and forth or like just slowly rotating it in my hands. That's going to hurt again. Damn it. And like, I wonder what those people thought of me. Because that was also when I had half of my head shaved and uh, my tattoos were out. Had my nails painted and my hair dyed. Hey, we finished this uh, this mission though. All right. get aboard and let's get out of here. As I mentioned, I think um, in The Hobbit, two swords get looted. Uh, Orchrist and Glamdring. And I think one of the translations of Glamdring is... The foe hammer. Um, what do I think of that? Either that's tacky and stupid of them to be like, oh, look, we named it after a thing from Lord of the Rings. Aren't we cool? Or, or like, you know, be cool. We named this after a thing from Lord of the Rings. But on the other hand, you could argue that it's actually a... Uh, oh, that's weird. I tried to get out and got back in immediately. You could also argue that it's... Um, like... By now, Tolkien is six or seven hundred years old. And that's just a new mythology, you know? Tolkien's Legendarium is a new mythology. And they name stuff after, um, you know, Norse mythology. So why not name it after other mythologies, you know? I really want to see Afrofuturism taken to the point of, um, actually, wait, let me turn this up. Taken to the point of this, the where it's a space opera. The ship is currently holding position approximately 300 meters above the other end of this plateau. So how do we get inside the ship if it's in the air? The core is you, me, a rifle, not wings. There's a gravity lift that varies troops and supplies between the ship and the surface. That's our ticket in. Once we get inside the ship, I should be able to lock on to the track. So we're trying to track down Keys, no Commander Keys because he's important for some reason. Hit him, Marines. Go, go, go. The core ain't paying us by the hour. Stick to the higher ground to the right. We should be able to recon See, the See, it's kind of weird. Uh, I've detected Covenant stationary. Because, like, I can't think of another time where you try to, using your sniper rifle to take out the gunners. go rescue someone, the like a like an escort quest or a fetch quest in Halo. In to support us, Sergeant. The Master Chief... Oh, that was so cool. Oop, doop, doop. Get out of my way, dude. Oh, yeah, you can also see that the, the flashlight's actually on the gun. Because you can see when I reload, the light goes all over the place. Oh, boy. This is always a, a, a motif and gameplay thing I've loved. Like, oh, the enemy has better weaponry and shit. Well, why not just steal it? No, give me that shit. I need better weaponry. I'm the chief. Give me your gun. <laughs> nice. Like, look at that. I killed four grunts and I didn't even need to reload. This gun is silly at this stage. Like, in the other games, I would argue it's still the worst gun, but it's like a real gun. It's just something that you usually want to switch out pretty quickly, but like, it is a real gun at least. Here it's like, oh my god, it's so drab and shitty. Um, I'm probably going to be playing Far Cry later this month. One of them, I'm not sure. 
And um, there was a uh, there was an era in console games, uh, a little in PC games, um, specifically shooters though, where everything was fucking brown. Um, and sometimes it was like, oh, this takes place in the shitty part of Australia, like Mad Max or um, like Mad Max or a, a, like a Fallout where it's post-apocalyptic. Um, but hook by crook, one way or another, there was just this era of, of console games and uh, specifically shooters where everything was fucking brown and drab. Um, and a lot of that was, uh, there were so many military games, um, and they're all trying to be realistic, so it's like, oh, Operation Desert Storm. You know, go shoot these Afghanistani people. Go commit American war crimes on, you know, the Middle East. And so you had a lot of brown games. Um, it starts earlier as well, because there's a lot of gray and brown and quake. Quake is like, what, 95, 96? Um, and I wanted to comment on how Halo, bless its heart, has always been... Wait. I forgot they explode. Halo, bless its heart, has always been very, very colorful, one way or another. Yeah, yeah, I'll go do everything. So yeah, here they give the explanation of, oh, I'm a Spartan, so I do most of the work anyway. And as I mentioned, I'm not, um, you know, the god of war yet that Chief will eventually become. Even though I am pretty reliable. Holy shit, I hold, I'm holding 50 sniper rounds. Jesus Christ. So typically these things would be shades, but they have this different emplacement gun for whatever reason here. Maybe they just hadn't invented it yet. Uh, but something I wanted to comment on is after the era of brown, there was the era of green, where everything was big and leafy and green. Um, and I think that that kind of started with Far Cry 3, because Far Cry 3 was a game where it's like, well, it's not fucking brown at least, but it was all it was all jungle and it was all so bright and it was just a different type of one color you know it's something that um, I'm talking about in Dishonored with uh, with the wife my girlfriend Sarah uh, where at the very least Dishonored has an art style you know like yes it is all grey blue and silver but it has an art style it has something going for it Deus Ex is the same way uh, Human Revolution specifically you know, everything is black and yellow. But, for Christ's sake, it has a visual style. It, it is identifiable. You know, you look at it and you know what you're looking at. Because there are so many Call of Duties where I couldn't tell them apart from that shit. I mentioned this in some other playthrough. I think it was Cry of Fear. But, like, the most interesting Call of Duty story is uh, stolen from Metal Gear Solid 4. Because I think it's Black Ops 2 or maybe Black Ops 3 that has uh, a semi-interesting story. That story is all about how... Um, uh, private military corporations are taking over the world by microchips in guns and stuff. Um, and nanotech inside of sol soldiers as well, which is just Guns of the Patriots. That's what that plan is called. It's called Guns of the Patriots because it was featured in Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. Am I using Halo to complain about Call of Duty? Yes, I am. Because no matter what, Halo had so much more going for it than Call of Duty. Because Call of Duty was like, we're going to have a realistic war shooter. And realism is not more fun. You know, getting shot twice is not necessarily a fun thing to happen even if it is what would realistically happen if most humans were shot. Getting shot twice and dying, I should specify. I don't know if I did. Next-gen graphics. Alert! Covenant dropships are inbound. Man, it's always something. 
I believe hunters show up here for the first time. I've mentioned uh, hunters before, and uh, we saw them a couple of times in uh, Riach. The hunters are really cool because uh, they're actually just a, a colony of worms called Legeko, I believe. Uh, and when they all unite, they're called Mega Legeko. Because, you know, that's just a word that means bigger. This fucking gun, dude. It still blows my mind that Jeff Ramsey is in Halo Reach and he's called that and does his own lines. That is wild. It's one of the nice things about Bungie is that they're, they've always been a really cool company. They're getting less cool with age. Um, I think it's part of the, you know, the industry fucking them over. And part of the fact that, like, Destiny is a lot of things, but it's not many that people want. I can get into that later, because fuck, I've got to have something to talk about, right? But yeah, so, um, Bungie was always a really cool company, so when they first saw- Oh, there they are, the Hunters. When they first saw Red vs. Blue, and for those who don't know, um, Red vs. Blue is why the production company Achievement Hunter and Rooster Teeth are famous. Because they used the original, um, Halo and then Halo 2 to make a machinima. And for those who don't know what that is, a machinima is an animated, uh, movie using uh, a game's engine. And that can either be um, a let's play where the commentary is in character, like Freeman's mind, which is you know essentially a let's play where the commentary is in character as Freeman, uh, or it can be something that uses the engine, like a like a source filmmaker movie. Yeah, they made a, a very early machinima back in the olden days of the internet in the 2000s. Uh, and it was called Red vs. Blue because in Halo, the two default teams in multiplayer are red and blue. And Bungie, instead of like being like, hey, shut this shit down, get the fuck out of here, you can't use our game to do that, uh, they were instead like, hey, we like this, do some more of this. And Bungie uh, has always had a really close, like, cooperation communication with Rooster Teeth and other fans of it for that reason. Uh, and it's something that I really like, because if 343 was to be like, okay, no, for real, stop doing Red versus Blue, they would be crucified. Because you can't do that. That's, that's fucked, man. All right, so uh, next up we have this, where we're going to run around and go fucking find commander keys. I'm just checking the record. We're only like 20 minutes in. That's fine. It's the Covenant. Oh, shit. So back in the olden days... Uh, you couldn't pick up an energy sword. They were just usable by elites. You could not have one yourself. And uh, that was because they would explode when you killed the elite holding it. Wow. Oh, there he is. So you can see that the sword just poofs out into nowhere. That's a... Now that is night and day. Yeah, it's another thing of like, oh yeah, in Halo 1, uh, we couldn't figure out how to make melee weapons work in the engine, and they were really hard to balance, so you just can't use them. But in uh, games after that, you, you can use the energy sword. So, you know, this is the game where you can't use energy swords. And it's uh, it just kind of fucks with people of like, well, huh, this is well, weird. 
And so for the world building, what does that actually mean? Like, oh, uh, for this ship, on for whatever reason, uh, you couldn't pick up the Covenant Energy Sword, even though you can in Reach, which is before this. So it's like, oh yeah, for whatever reason, uh, all the Covenant Swords in this arrow just exploded. It's like that thing in a Star Wars, where in Star Wars, you know, the lack of ability to aim uh, from the Stormtroopers is well documented and well known. And so there have been many attempts to rewrite that. A few times it's been, uh, they've claimed it's because of clone degradation. Because the stormtroopers were clone troopers. So they argue, oh, the clones just started to break down and, you know, fucking fall apart and shit. Uh, they, they all got, like, clone brain cancer and stuff. You know? Um... But that ended up having another snarl in continuity of like, oh, wouldn't they have fixed that? So there was a different guy who they cloned the rest of the clones off of. So like at some point between episode uh, four and five, I think, or maybe after that, uh, they stop making clones based off of Django and or Boba Fett and start making clones off of a different guy but he's also a Mandalorian, so he still has the same accent and stuff. Uh, and the clones all look the same, so it's... And that's just one of those like weird snarls of continuity. Another one I saw, they attempted to... Wow, this is... Wow. They attempted to claim that... Uh, all the guns that the Empire got had misaligned sights. And, like, you don't need sights to shoot a gun. And the guns look fine. You know, maybe there's a weird thing involving... Oh, yeah, so here... You can actually see uh, the difference of using invisibility. Active camo. That's pretty stark. Anyway, yeah, my point was uh, they try to retcon some shenanigans in to explain why uh, why stormtroopers can't shoot for shit. Both of them only raised more questions. And uh, I feel like it's a similar thing with this of like, hey, how come, uh, you know, for this week, all Covenant swords exploded and you couldn't use them, but, you know, all the other times, those those are completely fine. Uh, well, the answer is uh, don't ask. Just shut up. kind of pinned down back here. These are moments that I actually really like. Um, it's something because having regenerating health means that you have to use cover more than you would as like a Gordon Freeman. But the thing is, um, in a game like Gears of War, you have a button that just sticks your ass to cover. Um, I've not played a lot of Gears of War, so I don't have a lot of observation on how that mechanic feels and works. Wow, that, uh... Can I get someone else's gun, please? Excuse me. Can I have a gun? Damn. <sighs> Ran out of guns. So yeah, I don't know a lot about how that mechanic feels and works outside of Gears of War. But in a game like Deus Ex Human Revolution, which I think is a pinnacle of RPGs and shooters, it's used for stealth, which I think is a lot more elegant than using it in a game like this. Because in Half-Life, you obviously can use cover, um, and it's smart to, you know, bob and weave and move and shit. I, I refer to it as having doom fingers of, like, that specific style of play where you're just essentially dancing and 
skating around with your character to uh, avoid damage. There we go. Uh, yeah, so Doomfingers. And in this, you have to use cover a lot more. Damn. Wait, can I just run down here and poop this? Well, I can, but not like that. Okay. Anyway, the point that I've been trying to get at for a couple of minutes here is, uh... Wait. That's the with with there. shooting mechanics like this. Sometimes the feeling of using cover is just so satisfying. Like, it can really, really, like, satiate the player of, like... Like, I'm here, I'm hunkered down, people are shooting at me. I have small windows of actually being... Oh, wow, that's weird. The hitboxes are, are fucked up from both versions. Across the two versions, I should say. Nice. But you can get extremely satisfying moments of just... Like, al almost World War II moments, I would say. Just like, <laughs> I've got to hide here, you know, make sure to get them off my ass. Hope that I'm not slaughter myrtleized. Alright. Where's the fools in here? Careful, uh, those guys, their bodies turn into uh, big old grenades whenever they die. Just, uh, just a precaution. You can also see that, um, with, uh, with the shields of these guys, uh, of the jackals, bullets, even at this early stage of this franchise. Sorry, I think that's Surgeon Johnson there. Bullets still like bounce the fuck off and like rebound, which is really fun. There's not enough games, I think, that have a uh, rebound mechanics for bullets. In uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, there is one gun that does it. It's uh, Ocelot's gun, the single action army. Because, like, you know, his whole thing is that he's a, uh, a wizard with recoil. So when he shoot, bullet bounce and hit people behind wall. All right, let me see here. God, like here it's just so gross and bland looking. Honestly, this this is the changes between these two versions. Like, I was someone who was juiced for this on the on the merit of, like, ooh, if I get an Xbox One, I'll be able to play this game that I never was able to play. And I didn't get an Xbox One, because, fuck, that console is... That console has problems. But, like, now that I'm I'm actually playing it, I I definitely was warranted in my, in my lust to play this game. Oh, shoot. Got right up into his mouth. But yeah, the differences between two versions are just so... Oh, this is a really... I'm really glad I'm doing this LP. Like, not just because I've been playing games with complicated stories and here I just get to shut my fucking brain off. Play something simple. With an adequate challenge, I will say. You know, I'm not being babied here, but... And I am able to, to, to show my skills a little bit. Excuse me, everyone. I'm going to 
hunker down in here. The PC controls are taking me a little getting used to, but they're alright. Um, I still think it's at least a little heretical to play Halo with keyboard and mouse. Though this is one of the few where it's acceptable, because as I uh, mentioned in other episodes, this game was actually released for uh, PCs. So this is this is a cool level of like, hey, we broke into a Covenant ship, and like, it happens so early in Halo that I feel like this doesn't get the the, the credit that it should, you know? Because like, hey, this is a pretty big fucking deal, right? Like, it's a very uncommon thing, and it's a cool tactic. But because Halo is so focused on like wowing the player and having cool shit happen that like you almost don't get the time to appreciate how fantastical a lot of it a lot of it is Halo is definitely a game made to be replayed over and over again because sometimes you don't get the significance of something until playthrough 2 Battle.net always makes me think of the, the service that Blizzard uses. For those who don't know, uh, Blizzard is another game company. Um, oh man, this, this one is a really bad melee. Yep. I love this. I love, like, having to use... Like, I've commented on this, and it's why I love the Famine Skull. But I love... Oh, yeah, and the Plasma Pistol also has the charge shot, and this thing's fantastic. But I, I love the mechanic and idea, and, like... Like, the idea of, oh, I'm out? Fine. Give me your gun, and just... You take it off the guy you're in the middle of killing. Because like with some people, like a, like a Solid Snake or Doom guy, they're very particular about their weaponry. Like Doom guy has his shotgun, and that's the shotgun he has. You know, he always has a very specific taste in gun. Tries to use the same ones every time, or you know, similar analogous guns. But yeah, you also can't get the fuel rod cannons off of. Uh, grunts or hunters. But yeah, with Chief, he has no attachment to a gun one way or another. Like, just give me this fucking thing, I'll take it. Hand it over, you know? I like that. I like that about the man. Because Chief, he gets the job done. Wow. Oh, that's, that's Guilty Spark. Um, we've yet to see him, but uh, he's, he'll become important. Do you like how I switched it as the explosion happened? That was pretty rad. So another thing on the topic of Halo, um, I feel like a lot of people getting in this early almost can't appreciate the technology. Because I've talked about how the game like tries to balance its levels of technology where it's like, oh, humans have light speed travel and uh, super soldiers and stuff, but the Covenant are still better, but the Forerunners are better than them, and the Precursors are better than them. And it's like, uh, what? Another thing about um, Halo that I, uh, I want to comment on, because it's uh, similar to Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars, and to a lesser extent Halo, never has that fish out of water moment. Because by the time we're here in Halo's story, Master Chief has already tussled, like Master Chief has already achieved the rank of Master Chief. Um, he has already tussled with the Covenant, you know, tens of times. He's killed hundreds of aliens. Seeing an alien is nothing new to him. And there are moments in this game of like, oh, this is weird and new. We've never seen something like this. Uh, specifically involving the Flood, which we 
saw a little bit in Halo Wars, but they don't appear in Reach. Um, but yeah, and, and every other soldier is like, hey, this is what a Covenant is. This is what they look like. This is an elite. They'll fuck you over. This, they'll, they'll wreck your day. Tubes? Tubes. Wow. That was, uh, that was pretty scary. I'll be honest. Having, um, Grunt, uh, Grunt Funeral on really, really changes the balance of the game. Because now the sim even the simplest enemy has a very legitimate, um, threat. Oh, wow, that was really cool. How the plasma, like, smoked off the shield. Wow, that's a dope effect. Does that ever come back? I don't remember seeing that in the other game. Nope. Damn it. I saw him land and then looked away and realized, wait, I know who that is. I know it's got a low battery. I'm trying to swap it. There you go. Yeah, very rarely is there the fish out of wa fish out of water moment where it's like, okay, here's what all of this is, you know? Because like, take like an Isekai or a Portal Fantasy, you know, like a Narnia or a um, like a Narnia or um, an Alice in Wonderland, even. The thing about Isekai is that typically it revolves. Well, I mean, typically, but almost always it involves reincarnation. So Portal Fantasy is the generic term, but more people know Isekai in a weird way. But take like a portal fantasy, like a uh, uh, Chronicles of Narnia, you know? Kids are all from Britain. I know what Britain is, you know? Even though I'm an American, um, I understand what Britain is. I understand what a British child in uh, World War II is going to be going through. Shit, landed right at my feet, didn't he? You know, I, I understand this. You know, as, as a reader, it is very simple for me to understand what is going on with this whole with this whole British kid World War II business. I get it pretty easily. You know? And then they all go to Narnia. And so as the reader, as the experiencer of this this thing, you're like, what the f heck is happening? You know? Um but the characters are also like, what is this place? You know, they don't know what the fuck Narnia is. They've never been there before. And the only time that happens is in later books. Because they've already been there. But if you're there, you probably read those books as well. But even in some of those books, there are new characters who don't know what Narnia is. So there, there's always the ability for, almost always, the ability for the audience to be like, okay, I don't know, but neither do the characters. So we can, you know, unlock this knowledge, understand this together. But in a lot of constructed worlds, that never happens. The thing about Lord of the Rings... Well, the thing about Tolkien's Legendarium is that the first two entries in it are Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And in The Hobbit, in both of those, they start at... They start very simply with Hobbits. Oh, get away from me. He was chasing me down. You all saw that. Dude, the door closed. Dude! In The Hobbit, you have, um, you know, the Hobbits are the main character. They don't know shit about fuck. They are essentially that British school child where it's like they're, they're a rando. They don't know about anything. The audience can put themselves onto that shoe. You know, the audience doesn't need to know about what's going on because the Hobbits don't either. And like Aragorn and Legolas know what's up. And to an extent, so does Gimli. But like of most of the viewpoint characters... We can reliably just have them. Oh, I'm dry. I'm totally out of everything. Um, let me scrounge for some weapons here. Yeah, with those characters, we can... Sorry, I'm just focusing in. 
Anyway, so with those characters, we can have the moments of we don't know what's going on, but that doesn't matter because the we'll we'll get it, you know. Whereas in this, that almost never happens because Chief is expected to know everything because he's a Superman. You know, he's he is the hyper lethal vector. He is the god of war. This looks like the ship's command center. The captain's transponder signal is strong. We must be close. Um, so yeah, just a thing I wanted to comment on. And for, for those of you who are writers, I know that, you know, some people who watch my show are, uh, DMs or people who world build in their novels. Um, cause I had that series of world building a couple years back. Go ahead and take a look at that. Um, oh wow. I caused a chain reaction all the way up the fucking, all the way up the ship. Wow. Yeah. So it's almost an unstable equilibrium. Anyway, my point is. My point is, is that it's always good to have a viewpoint character who doesn't know his ass from his butt in uh, anything with a lot of constructed world. Because the more a character knows about a constructed world, the less reason you have to tell the audience anything. Because in story, that character doesn't need to know. They should already know it all. You know, Chief doesn't need to know. He should know it all. But that's a problem for people who don't know what this game's about. Actually, I think I can ditch that. Oh, man. So, Unstable Equilibrium is... Uh, it's a gameplay term of... It's a gameplay term that mentions the rich get richer. That's what Unstable Equilibrium is. Um, the example that I gave is Dark Souls. Because in Dark Souls, dying will rid you of your souls. How did he get all of this into here? And still die? Weird. Anyway, dying will rid you of souls, and souls are what you need to level up. Leveling up makes your character stronger. In many cases, especially in early game Dark Souls, you die because your character is weak. So people with weak characters will die more and lose the ability to level up. Whereas people with strong characters will die less and be able to level up more. That's what an unstable equilibrium is. And it's very hard to balance games around that. And sometimes a game mechanic will just invite an unstable equilibrium into it more than another game would. Like, um, Dark Souls is a good example because there's a lot of shit in it that gives unstable equilibriums. He was just soaring at me like a fucking sarcophagus. That was... that's not right. Maybe that is right. Is that what that's supposed to look like? That's a little goofy if you ask me. But yeah, um, that's just a guy in there. But yeah, Grunt Funeral is a good example of unstable equilibrium because if you can get space, you know, if you can get out on them, then you'll clear out a big swath of grunts all at once. But if you can't, they'll fuck you over. While the Covenant had us locked up in here, I overheard the guards talking about this ring world. You know, like a halo. Call it halo. Does no one comment on the one fact that they have the, the religious the term for halo? According to the data in their networks, like, the ring has some kind halo, of religious you know, English speakers know it as if that I'm ring of light around the head of an angel. They believe that halo is and like, kind of I know we talked about how the characters are all, you know, they already know what everything is, but like, they're so jaded that they're like, huh, they have a semi-Christian theology and, uh, you know, they speak English. I 
took a cruiser that I damaged during the battle above the ring. But they must be looking for Halo. Say, so Halo's a big fucking deal. That's bad news. If Halo is a weapon and the Covenant gained control of it, they'll use it against I, I, I love that. The entire human he, here we see a very good example of sentences to catch the, the player or viewer up. That's bad news. If the Covenant get access to Halo, which is a large weapon, they will use it to kill all humans. Chief, you have the point. Little silly, but who am I to judge? So, um, yeah, now we've got this guy. We've got to make sure he doesn't die, which is really annoying. Very rarely in Halo do you get escort quests. I think the only one I can think of is escorting. Oh, yeah, so you can see that here they have the traditional like face, but here they look more like the elites do in uh, Reach. Because otherwise, all you're looking at is just a bunch of different elites with different helmets. Like if the hat is the only difference between these aliens. I guess the hat and the color of them, then like you might need a little more. Work. Yeah, we also this is this is one of the lamer levels in my opinion. Because it's not a new level. And in fact you just do the same level backwards. I'm not even sure if this is considered a separate level, now that I think of it. I was hoping that that guy's loot would have respawned. But yeah, this is this is a weak part. Nice. Yeah, either this is a weak part in a level, or this is one of the weakest levels. Nice. Because either you, uh... Because, like, it's an escort mission. And escort missions are well known as being very annoying because you have to rely on a character to not die. And I might have said this before, but the best escort quests are where you're really the one being escorted because you're escorting someone who is stronger than you are. But for whatever reason, game designers always choose to make the person you're escorting weak. You know, as like, oh, yeah, that's of course, that's why you have to escort them. But, damn, that sucks, though. Because... You gotta play ball with this weakling. You know? It's like when your annoying little cousin comes over and your mom's like, you have to play with him, he's your cousin, but it's like, oh, he's so stupid and smelly though. Negative Cortana, I've been engaged by Covenant Air Patrols and I'm having a tough time shaking them. You'll be better off finding your own ride. Sorry. Acknowledged, Foehammer. Cortana out. Air support is cut off, Captain. We need to hold here until she can move in. Oh, oh god, I shot you because I thought you were a jackal. We're screwed. We're screwed, man. Stow the belly aching, soldier. Remember you're a leatherneck. Cortana, if you and the chief can get us into one of those covenant dropships, I can fly Oh man. He's so yes, yes. ugly. There's a covenant dropship still docked. I'm building with uh, TNT recently in Minecraft a lot. Damn it! Yeah, I, I I call bullshit on that. I don't think one guy could be that important in a war this big. Assassinated him as well. Yeah, I, I think it is literally impossible that anyone could be that important in a war consisting of multiple planets. Like, I don't even think Chief should be that important. And I, I think it's kind of weird that Cortana is that important. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, I totally forgot. I have been getting these. Armstrong, who is your maker? 
These are terminals. They're little collectibles. Because everything is so white, you can't read the fucking subtitles. Never made, but you are right here, where you should not be. Tell your charges to cease their efforts immediately. Or a team must not be violated. Construct, respond! Jumbled grass. Familiar terms. I serve. None serve me. So you can see with those little Your pod fellas there. Cease all aggression towards the reclaimers and leave this installation at once. Construct, you are dangerously close to unleashing a force you cannot comprehend. So for those who saw Halo Wars, that's very obviously the flood. And for those who didn't, the flood is uh, alien zombie fungus. This is most inappropriate. We follow. Yeah, zombie fungus, yada yada, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the reclaimers are humans. Find free. Uh, because recall that uh, we're the Covenant's favorites for whatever reason. Um, or not the Covenant. We're the Forerunners' favorites. Which is another reason the Covenant's so salty. So yeah, the flood will become more uh, important later, as will this little pod fella and others like him. Yeah, I wanted to comment on. Um, I think it's kind of crazy that Cortana is so important, despite the fact that you know she's just one AI. I know that there are some reasons that you know she would be that important, but also, come on. I just think it's a little silly. Where is everyone? Yes, Captain. There's a Covenant dropship still docked. Right here? There they are. So I gotta hug this dumbass to make sure he doesn't kill himself. Dude! I hate you. I hate you, keys. I don't care how cool or important you allegedly are. Yes, as I say, I think it is, uh, a f I think it's folly, a fallacy, and the height of improbability that any one human could be that important. Like, the reason that Chief is important is because he's the player character. And so they have to give reasons for Chief to be important later. Like, oh, Cortana is, you know, sitting in his head. Wait. Yeah, that's still live. You know, so like, but that only comes later. Like, Chief is important because Kotan is in his head. Um, and the reason that Cortana thinks Chief is important is because Chief allegedly has luck. Chief is luckier than other Spartans. Um, and Spartans are, you know, best of the best, but... Chief's best of the best of the best of the best. Because he's lucky. Whether or not that makes sense... You know, there's not a lot of magic in Halo. Um, most magic is just technology. So yeah, we're now stealing a uh, Kevy dropship. <laughs> This is kind of nice. They give you... Nice one, sir. Time for a little they, they show you hunters earlier and like, oh, hunters are a big deal. You know, hunters are your mini boss. And then they ram, you ran them with a big tuning fork. All right. Um, hold on. Oh, oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, hey, that's been an episode of Halo Combat Evolved. Um, thank you everyone for joining me and discussing world building Halo and... Uh, the early, janky, crappy nature of this game. Um, I've been Alfred. Uh, this has been Halo Combat Evolved. Thanks for coming by. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.